If you're going to spend $15,000 on a piece, you sort of want to make sure that it ages well and you're not going to ruin it after a couple of uses. Hi guys, my name is GPS and welcome back to my channel. In the past when I came across a luxury piece that I was really tempted to buy but I couldn't quite make up my mind on the spot, I would take a picture of it just so I can go back to it and have a closer look later on. But because of this habit, I've ended up with hundreds of pictures in my phone. And as I was going through these pictures last night, trying to delete some, I thought it might be fun if I shared with you a few pieces that I was considering for a while, but I decided against. And now in hindsight, I'm glad I did. So in today's video, we'll be taking a walk down my window shopping memory lane and we'll be looking at a few bags, mainly Hermes bags, that I decided not to add to my collection. So if you want to see a few pieces that I don't regret not buying, then please keep on watching. The first bag was offered to me back in 2017. And at the time this bag was quite new, so it worked on an offer basis. It wasn't something that was ever on shelves. But now if you walk into an Hermes store and ask for this, if they have it, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to give it to you. And I think you can even see this bag online every once in a while. But the first bag that we'll be talking about is the Verum mini bag with the chain. Now this bag, if I remember correctly, was introduced in 2017, early 2018. But in case you've never seen a Veru bag, I always say that it kind of reminds me of a Chanel classic double flap. And if a Constance bag had a baby, that's how I would kind of describe the Veru bag. And you can easily recognize it because it has this really interesting mechanism on the front, which obviously has an equestrian inspiration to it. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the inspiration is, but what it resembles to me is the sort of sliding mechanism that you can find on stable doors. I'm not sure if that's exactly where the inspiration came from, but that's what it reminds me of. So it's quite an interesting bag. The mechanism is unique. There really isn't anything else out there that would be similar. And I know because of that, some people love it and some people hate it. I happen to quite like it. But there are a couple of reasons why I didn't pick up this mini Bervu bag. Number one is that it comes with a chain and I'm not really the kind of person who would wear a bag with a chain. It's just not really my aesthetic. Even though I find it, the chain on this bag to be really, really good quality. It's really weighty and it's quite a refined look for a chain. It's definitely not crunchy by any means. But that was, I think, one of the main reasons that it came with a chain. Number two is that it was quite small. And I think this was before I got my very first Mini Kelly. I just didn't want to go for a bag so small at the time. Let me tell you, just to put things in perspective, I was collecting Birkin 40s. So compared to a Birkin 40, a Mini Veru was an extremely tiny bag. Now looking back, this would actually be quite a spacious bag. If I remember correctly, the Mini Veru measured, I think, 17 centimeters which is actually quite a bit smaller than the Mini Kelly, which is 20 centimeters. But I have to say that I think most people would find the Mini Veru to be a little bit more spacious because it's not a tapered shape. It's 17 centimeters all the way up. But anyway, at the time I found it quite small for myself. And I just simply didn't feel that this bag was worth, I think nearly $8,000. While I found the inspiration quite unique, it just wasn't a bag that was really calling out my name. However, I have to say that if you like the Vervru look or if you're looking for a mini bag, something that's practical and also a piece that you can wear to a more formal occasion, but also looks good with a more casual outfit, you might want to have a look at the Vervru bag. It does come with a little card holder on the inside, a little pocket that you can use for cards. And it also has, if I remember correctly, this larger pocket underneath the flap, which goes the entire width of the bag. So it is definitely a little bit more practical than some other mini bags out there. So it might be something that you want to look into, but in hindsight, I'm really glad I didn't add it to my collection because I really don't think that I would have been able to take advantage of it. The second Hermes bag that I'm so glad I did not spend any money on is the Bolid travel bag, which is the so-called Bolid 45. Now looking at this bag, this seems huge, but as I mentioned before, at the time I was mainly carrying Birkin 40s and compared to those, 
This bag really wasn't that big. It was just quite a bit taller. And I was looking at this bag for traveling. I was going uh, back and forth between this and the HAC. And at the time I preferred the HAC. Now I think I would prefer the Bolide travel bag, the Bolide 45, just because the shape is, I think is just a better travel bag if you're going to buy a bag specifically for traveling. I think this one you would find is easier to pack because of the overall shape. And not to mention that this is quite a bit lighter than the HAC, considering that it doesn't have all that heavy hardware. I like the zipper on top. The Bolide bag was one of the very first bags out there that actually featured a zipper. And this is just kind of a blown up version of the Bolide 31, not the Bolide 1923, the original bag, but the newer take on it. I really like this bag. It was offered to me in this sort of distressed linen, which made the bag even lighter. So I was looking at it for quite a while and I was thinking about it, but in the end I realized that I'm just not the kind of person who needs a travel bag, first of all this big, and one that doesn't come with wheels. If Even if I go away for a long weekend or just a day, I'm going to take a small suitcase with me. I've had my removal for a couple of years and I really wouldn't consider traveling with anything else. It's just so much more functional and practical to travel with a bag that comes on wheels. Even if you don't take a flight, which if I go to an airport, I'm not willing to go with anything else but an actual suitcase. Even if you go by car, I don't see the point of having soft luggage, unless maybe it's a tiny car and you really need to shove things in the back, but um, it's really just not something that I need in my life, so I'm glad I didn't spend any money on it. But um, if I had to make a decision and choose between an HAC and a travel bullet bag, I have to say I would go for the travel bullet. The next bag that I'm so relieved I never ended up buying is the Medor clutch bag, which I remember I was looking at because I was hunting for a Kelly Cot. This was again back in 2017, 2018, and it, they were just simply impossible to come by. I just couldn't get my hands on a Kelly Cot, so I was looking at a couple of other clutch bags. Now thinking about it, it kind of sounds crazy because I was offered two Kelly Cots the year after and I couldn't turn them down fast enough. My taste changed so much. But um, anyway, the Medora clutch bag is, as the name suggests, it's a clutch bag. And the main reason why I was looking at this is because I absolutely love the CDC bracelets. And the Medora bag features my favorite part about the CDC, which is the sliding mechanism. There really isn't anything like this out there. There was a point in time when this bag was quite popular, I think when it first launched, but I really haven't heard many people talk about it and I really haven't seen many people even carry this bag. Honestly, I don't even remember the last time I saw this bag on a shelf in a boutique. I'm sure it hasn't been discontinued, but it's just a bag that never really took off or didn't age well. I'm glad I didn't buy it because I ended up going for the GJ, which is I think about a thousand or two less expensive than the Medora Clutch. And even though I got a couple good uses out of it, I ended up selling it, I believe, last year. So I can only imagine how much I would have used this. The Gigi was, I think, a little bit more practical because it's longer and a little bit less wide than the Medora clutch, so it was easier to hold on to. Whereas the Medora clutch has almost this sort of rounded edge to it, which you might like, you might not. I personally didn't, but now thinking about it, I think it was a great decision not to buy it because I'm realizing that I'm just not a clutch bag kind of person. In this video, we will not be covering any Birkin or Kelly bags because I have specific videos talking about those. So I'll make sure to link them down below in case you want to see Kelly's and Birkins that were offered to me in the past that I kindly passed off on. I think I've done two of those videos, so I'll make sure to link them in the info box as well as up here. But there are two more Hermes bags that I wanted to mention here. The next piece is technically not a bag, but it's an SLG. And it's the Constance wallet in the longer version, which even though it's an SLG, I would kind of consider it a bag because um, it's so big that I think it functions best as either as a clutch bag or as a crossbody bag. And this was offered to me last year in the hottest color of the season, which was 5P pink. A lot of people refer to this, I think, on social media as bubblegum pink, but the official name was actually 5P pink. And I did consider for a very brief period asking for a bag in this color 
maybe a mini Kelly just because it was so beautiful, but I realized it would have been the biggest waste of money. I would never, ever, ever carry a pink bag. But I did talk to my Essie about it and she promised me that she would let me know when they received something in the color. So she ended up showing me the Constance wallet in 5B pink in Met Alligator, which is really just not something that I wanted to spend $15,000 on because that's the price of the Constance wallet in exotic skin. And at the end of the day, I still prefer my Kelly wallet over the Constance wallet just because of the size and the shape. I have talked about the Constance wallet before, so I'll make sure to link a video up here. But the main reason why I don't think I ever picked it up is number one, it's Quite a bit bigger than the Kelly wallet so there are very few bags you would be able to fit the Constance wallet into and then number two these wallets really don't age well because the way you open it you kind of have to forcefully snap the age closure open which is the same with the bags but on the bags I find you have a little bit more space so you're less likely to mark and scratch underneath the hardware whereas with a wallet or an SLG it is much more obvious if you mark it or scratch it. But at the end of the day, I much rather spend that money on a Constance bag than just a wallet. So I'm really glad that I never added this to my collection. The next bag is actually from Chanel, it's not an Hermes piece. But as soon as I saw how hideous this picture looked, I knew you guys would likely want to see it. And it is the Gabriel Hobo bag in the largest size. Now I did buy the small version of this bag just last year or maybe the year before. But in this case, I'm talking about the hobo bag in the largest size, which I remember was all the craze because Hermes has very few bags that would be considered traditionally masculine. So every time a male celebrity is spotted carrying a Chanel bag, people go crazy for it. And I kind of did as well because at the time Pharrell was carrying this bag all the time. So I knew I had to go and see it. And I still remember this day so clearly. I stopped by the Chanel boutique in Soho and I looked at this bag, they had the mini version available and then the large one. But I kind of wanted to get this bag to take to college with me, something that would fit my computer. So I ended up looking at the largest size and the lovely client advisor there started showing me the different ways that you can style it. You can use it as a crossbody bag, as a backpack, as a belt bag. And I remember her just twisting those chains and putting them on me. And I remember she put the bag on me as a backpack and people working at Chanel started gathering around me and telling me how incredible it looked. And I remember looking in the mirror or I think, yeah, I think they took a picture of it for me so I can see it, which is the picture that we have here. And I just remember thinking to myself, this looks absolutely hideous. But because everyone was telling me how amazing it looks, it kind of skewed my perception. And I remember that I just could not wait to get out of the store so I can have a better look at these images because I really wasn't sure if there was something wrong with me or I just couldn't see what they were seeing. And I remember looking at these pictures as soon as I got home and thinking what a relief it is that I never ended up buying that bag because it looked absolutely ridiculous on me as a backpack. I mean, it was hanging down literally at the bottom of my bag. It didn't look like a backpack. It kind of looked like a pillow that I had stuck to my bag. It was, it was horrible. It was honestly terrible. And I'm not saying that this bag is terrible in general, but just the way the large one looked on me, it's definitely not something that I would spend any money on, to be honest. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about a bag that I'm pretty sure I have talked about in depth before, but it's a bag that some people love some people hate, but everyone feels quite passionate about it. And it's the Garden Party from Hermes. Now it's a bag that I looked at for a little while. I was considering it as sort of an everyday casual carry-all, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. But in my opinion, this bag is just not worth the money. It comes in a couple of different variations. You can pick it up in all leather or in the combination of leather and canvas. The one that I got to try on was in the military canvas with, in, with black leather. And while it's a nice bag, it comes in a few different sizes, I believe 30, 36, 39, and then a gigantic travel version. For me, it just doesn't do enough for the price. This bag ranges between just under three to $4,000, depending on the size and the material that you pick it up in. And for me, it just doesn't do enough to justify the price. 
Is it beautifully made? Yes, it is. Is it made of the most exceptional pieces of leather? Absolutely. But for that kind of money, I personally would much rather buy a herd bag or pick a tin because there are so many bags out there that are just as functional and as simple as the garden party but don't cost a leg and an arm. And the whole storytelling and narrative behind it is that it's a really simple sort of carry-all that is the perfect bag for you to escape the hustle and bustle of the city into the country. I guess I don't go to the country enough to need this bag in my life. I can absolutely see the appeal. It's simple, it's easy to use, it's functional, it is from Hermes. And if this bag was a thousand dollars, maybe I could stand behind it, but for the current price tag, it's definitely not something that you will see me unbox. And this is it guys, this concludes today's video on bags that I'm so glad I never ended up picking up. I would love to know if you guys enjoy this and if you'd want me to do a similar video on bags that I didn't pick up and I kind of regret that decision. And if there are any bags that you are glad that you didn't end up taking home, let me know what those bags are in the comment section. And if you enjoy this video, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.